Thank you very much for staying with us. You're watching TVC Breakfast. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on Nigerian newspapers. This morning, we've got a host of them as usual, and I begin with the Daily Times. The lead story there says 100 million Naira palliative claim as alleged by the uh, Nigerian Labour Congress. Well, this claim has now, uh, you know, brought up... Uh, Feedback, so to speak, from the National Assembly. The headline reads the 100 million palliative claim, NAS, and NLC clash. Right, interesting uh, one there. Let's head to the nation. The nation says employers reject NLC's plan to shut down economy. Why it is avoidable? This is a position by uh, Labour leader Issa Aremu. This is on the nation. Leadership now, governorship polls. Of course, uh, you know that uh, many election petition tribunals are delivering crucial judgments after hearing uh, cases of all parties concerned. Well, they say now, or the leadership says that the APC, the PDP, Labour Party, the NNPP as well, are jittery as judgment day inches closer. Hmm. Leadership. Uh, that's according to the leadership. On Blueprint is uh, said to be an alarm by the Counterterrorism Center regarding proceeds of kidnapping used to finance terrorism. Blueprint adds that uh, there is an admonition by Admiral Musa that the media must be cautious on terrorism reportage. Get all the details there from the Blueprint. Finally, is the punch. The punch is talking about uh, the hike in fees at various universities in the country with the Academic Staff Union of Universities, parents, students and others protesting as more universities hike tuition fees amongst other uh, fees. And uh, there is a rider there, prevail on universities to reverse fee increase. The Parent Teachers Association tells President Tinubu fair in mass protests. Yeah, so the Guardian newspaper um, is the first with me here. High prices push government homes beyond average Nigerians' reach. High prices push government homes beyond average Nigerians' reach. Business Day newspaper is next. Petrol imports drop amid higher oil prices. Subsidy removal hits European markets. OPEC reports shows. Petrol imports drop amid higher oil prices. Subsidy removal hits European market, o OPEC report shows. That's uh, the Business Day uh, newspaper. This Nigeria is next. How illegal miners ferry gold from Niger State across West Africa with cattle. How illegal miners ferry gold from Niger State across West Africa with cattle. That's uh, this Nigeria. Daily Trust is next. Lack of funds stall 16 trillion Naira railway project across Nigeria. Lack of funds stalls 16 trillion Naira railway project across Nigeria. That's uh, daily trust. Nigeria News Direct. Excessive charges impeding growth of Nigeria's aviation sector, IATA. Excessive charges impeding growth of Nigeria's aviation sector. That's according to the IETA, that's uh, uh, Nigeria News Direct giving us uh, that update. Uh, Daily Independent is next. Federal government asks CBN to meet airlines quarterly to resolve FX crisis. Federal government asks CBN to meet airlines quarterly to resolve FX crisis. That was a Daily Independent. Uh, Vanguard newspaper is the last but not least here. Forex scarcity sends Naira tumbling to 930 Naira to uh, 930 Naira per dollar. Forex scarcity sends Naira tumbling to 930 Naira uh, to the dollar. That's uh, the Vanguard newspaper. A lot of things, you know, um, issues coming up day in, day out. And then you wonder, <laughs> where do we start from? And this is even reflected on the papers, as we see. I don't think two papers uh, report on the same, you know, have, you know, lead stories that Absolutely. are I identical. So we might just be spoiled for choices, you mm. know, this morning. Okay, but one, one thing.
paper sticks out, uh, and that's the, the blueprint, which mm. talks about uh, the counter-terrorism centers raising an alarm mm. on the process of kidnapping used to finance terrorism. Also, the media is also brought uh, into the picture, yeah. urging the media practitioners to be cautious on terrorism reportage. And um, this, it was a fully attended event on Wednesday, uh, organized, uh, so to speak, by the National Coordinator, National Counterterrorism Center, which is in the office of the National Security Advisor, and the National Coordinator, uh, Rear Admiral Yaminu Musa, retired, uh, was among the keynote speakers. There were uh, presentations from the police, uh, from you know various. Uh, security operatives, now security agencies, I should say, and they all give various perspectives on the issue of kidnapping. It's, it is a national problem. That's right. Many states are badly affected. I could say, you could even argue that if there is a semblance of this in every state, though some regions have it more than others. That's and, right. uh, you know, there is a call now on people to be more conscious of um, you know the changing perspectives mm. yes we have but what is common now is kidnapping for ransom but um, there are worrying patterns that even after the families of the hostages are able to gather the humongous amounts of money uh, you know being demanded by the kidnappers of their loved ones sometimes we still get to hear of um, you know these hostages being killed mm. by the, the their host by by their uh, the kidnappers themselves, and this is, you know, very worrying. Of course, there's also another element that don't involve the police. We see that narrative over the time, and so it now becomes the families concerned are, you know, alone in, in their alarm, in their concerning situations, and um, perhaps all these are part of the things or the factors feeding on this problem. Uh, but, you know, one cannot stress it, overstress it, that there is definitely some gray areas, some lingering holes now that these criminals are utilizing and leveraging on, you know, at the expense of the masses. And, you know, more, we need more talk, but above all, we need much more action to curb this to the barest minimum. It's very sad that um, we've got um, an old general who was, you know, who was, who was in charge of, this, of the affairs of this country. You know, he tried his best, you know, at the time they brought into Kano Jets, they did a lot of bombing and all of that, but then, it's now being carried over to this administration. We want to see security, insecurity issues, you know, brought to, you know, just like you said, you know, we just don't want to hear about people being killed, people being Absolutely. kidnapped. And um, uh, thankfully, the NIMC has been moved to um, the Ministry of Interior. Interior. Yeah. So there, we will believe that when, because it's so funny, when you go to the bank to withdraw uh, ransoms and, you know, pay ransom on behalf of, one's relative being kidnapped, uh, there should be a means to trace them. They use phone calls, I mean, they use um, SIM cards to make phone calls to reach out to their victims' relatives. So they should be able to also, you know, trace all of this. Because you'd be wondering, the DSS does a lot of, you know, fantastic job when it comes to chasing maybe one single individual <laughs> who, is, who is harmless, and they will always give you your, your entire profile. So how much more of those who are in, are, are in the forest they are not ghosts, they are not air. We, we can easily find them, we can easily locate them. So I, I feel there's there much to be done by this administration because uh, we, we want to see a different thing entirely. We shouldn't be having you know, people being killed. And we talk about it every time, just like um, we are being called out by uh, Ad Admiral Mosa saying that media must be cautious on terrorism reportage. Yeah, I think they've also been calling on the media mm. to also you know, play a very important role. They, they always say that we shouldn't talk about it when people are being kidnapped. We shouldn't talk about it because it gives them um, publicity. And this is one of the things that these terrorists really want to, you know, they, they need that publicity. But we cannot not talk about it. We will definitely always, you know, bring it to the notice that this has happened. So I feel uh, those who are in that locality, they also need to always, you know, blow the Open whistle. Open up. You understand? Mm. They need to blow the whistle. They need to report. Mm. Uh, and that's transparency, that honesty, that trust must be built between the, or, or between the, the security agencies and the people who will be feeding them because there's a lot of you know, saboteurs among the, the people themselves and also the security agencies, just like we've said. Uh, we know more than 20 million out of school children, some of them are you know, cannon fodder, uh, fodder for, for, for these terrorists. 
because they don't go to school. They don't have money. They are, they are, they are poverty ridden. So if they see that they are just easy hands, easy, easy people to, to, to grab and you know, give some stipends and, 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 and they join them. They just tell them, go to so-so and so place and burn them uh, and, and bomb them. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot for this administration to really get on and, you know, uh, bring to bare minimum. I'm talking about calling out the orientation agency in Nigeria has oftentimes been called out because uh, this is uh, a whole problem. It's a systemic problem. It's That's not right. just, you know, this angle. It's, it's hydra-headed. So many angles to look at it. And even police or even the security officers, the DSS, interestingly, mm -hmm. is identifying <clears throat> lack of family values. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at, you know, the... DSS, you know, the position the DSS holds in terms of ensuring internal security, That's right. you know, of all the things for them to say, it now comes down to family values. And I think this is also a very crucial point That's right. That's that right. um, it may, you may argue that it's not the job of, of the DSS to talk about all this. But if you look at the Nigerian army, they talk about kinetic approaches. You mm. also see them, mm. um, will I say, romancing or moving, endearing themselves to uh, the people, to residents through uh, offering of basic services and all that, mm. not exactly within their core mandates to ensure yeah. security. Yeah. But, you know, all of this that, is you know, driving those, towards those a target, them, yeah. you know, to make them more humane, That's to make right. them, you know, more approachable, yeah. uh, so to speak. And this is very, very crucial because we cannot talk enough about the issue of trust, how that, you know, residents need to feel a measure of trust. If you see something, say something, Definitely. approach the nearest police station, approach security uh, operatives around you, or even go to your yeah, There should your be a mechanism for you. To, you may not necessarily go, go to there. Your community you may go online to and make these something. reports. You know? And yes, yeah. we live in an age where, you know, social media, many of these government officials, many of the security agencies are all online, mm. you know, also disseminating needed information. And, you, and I have seen them in Lagos and even in other parts of, of Nigeria, we've seen the way they respond i won't use instant response right. but i know i have seen you know um, you know commensurable re level of response yeah. uh, from security agencies to concerns of residents among them so all these things you know need need to to be factored and leveraged upon to mm. achieve this uh, this aim because it is a national burden yeah. that must be discharged yeah kemi so um, you know the dss talking about the lack of family values you know other reasons as uh, you know for men is yeah, definitely. So, you know, it actually starts from the family, really. If you don't take care, the charity begins at home, so they say. So the family is more like a, a, from the community. Then we have the community at large. We have the village. Village coming together to become um, in a local government and local government becoming state. So I think that level, we should begin to also train our children, you know, properly. But who is even give, administering this training if the parents themselves lack value or values? then what do we transmit to, to our world? So I think it's a holistic thing that we need to, we need to, to work on. And it's so sad hearing about village heads, the traditional also, also falling conniving, victims, right? you know, no, not, not just falling victims, but also conniving. It's not, it is, it's not it is, even, um, you know, criminals. Yes, yes. So it's, it's a whole that's lot of part things. Of, that's part of the problem. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all t the officers, you know, from the security agencies have also been indicted, you know, over that's time. Right. And, and we hope that all these things, now that people are talking about it, uh, daily action, needed action can be taken.